Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim if you're new here and I am going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, I am feeling a little under the weather while I'm on the road to recovery, but my throat and my voice is still a little off, but I could not put off filming this any longer. So also part of the mess, you see we have bins, choo and choo we are um, putting Christmas stuff away and obviously not everything as you can see, you'll still see Christmas decor. We are just a little bit behind on a lot of things and pulling out winter gear. Um, we haven't had any snow until just recently and so I had no need to get all of our winter gear out until now. So part of the mess and let's talk about my um, pantry challenge for um, January. So my pantry challenge is going to be pretty basic. Um, I just want to reduce the amount that we are spending on groceries and use that money for other things. There are lots, there have been lots of unexpected expenses in 2023 and now that it's 2024 I kind of want to start off on the right foot. And the easiest way to do that is going to be um, trim our grocery budget and then use that money to put other places, pay down some other bills and put in other accounts for different purposes. So I, um, my, <clears throat> my very loose guidelines are going to be i want to only spend about 50 dollars a week on groceries um my grocery budget does include everything uh so like toothpaste soap toilet paper things like that i made sure we had all that on hand before january started um but if i do this for a long enough time i will have to buy some of those items in which case i will probably up my um weekly budget to 75 or 80 dollars if i have to buy especially toilet paper so um but i have i will um, be showing you a kind of a pantry tour so you can see where we started for this week and i'm going to share with you my meal plan and the groceries that i am going to buy this week so um yeah let's dive right into it and see how i did So this is my grocery haul from Aldi this week for the first week of this um, pantry challenge, pantry, freezer, clean out, low spend, um, uh, I guess whatever I'm going to be doing for January, as long as I can do it. So January, maybe into February, hopefully into February. Okay, so this is what um, I have decided that we needed I made some meal plans um, that we needed to get through the week. And now I'm gonna show you what we got. Obviously you can see it. I Grapefruits are on sale, and so they were $3.99 for a five pound bag. I got two of those. Got some oranges. Bananas, I would have liked to get more, but they were all really green, or um, so I had to get the organic bananas, and this was the last bunch they had. Bell peppers, onions, Cauliflower, it fell out of the package when the kids are bringing it in, but I am e using this tonight for dinner, so um, I'm not worried about that. Two loaves of bread because I have not had time to make any bread. Hopefully going forward, I will be able to reduce that or not buy it at all, but for this week, I did get two loaves. Um, one uh, thing of everything bagels for breakfast sandwiches. It's a really quick breakfast when I make hot breakfast and I just couldn't give those up just yet. Some hummus, almond milk for my smoothies and shakes, um, regular milk, two bags of pretzels because while I will ask the kids to reduce the amount of pretzels we eat, I'm not going to ask them to not eat pretzels for you know a month or six weeks. And then I got one bag of frozen berries because I wanted to start doing some smoothies for like a week or so in the mornings um, for the kids just to kind of help get all of the processed sugar out of their diets um, while still getting something a little bit sweet but more nutritious. So as part of this pantry challenge that I am doing, I am going to show you my pantry and food storage. So this is my... Um, we only live in one floor, but we have a basement, an unfinished basement where I do have some food storage. I will show you that. But first I'm going to show you, um, this is our pantry off of our kitchen. Our kitchen is very tiny. It's a galley style kitchen. And um, I do not have hardly any storage for my 
kitchenware, let alone food. So I am very thankful for this wonderful uh, walk-in butler's pantry, I think you'd call it maybe. Um, so as you can see, I have lots of food storage. These are the rice, the rice I bought. Um, got jars of popcorn down there, diatomaceous earth, all sorts of stuff. This is stuff I'm hoping to go through and just use up. Lots of these are like little ingredients, part of a box of pasta, um, things like this. I just want to kind of get it cleaned out and a lot more usable. Know what I have in here. Sometimes things get shoved to the back and in the bins there and we don't, um, remember what we have always. So, you know, I do not do all of the putting of groceries away and everything. My kids help and we can have a system, but sometimes after a little bit, the system kind of breaks down and <laughs> we have to go through and, and, you know, tidy it up, eat it all. So that's part of what I am doing this January and probably into February is shopping my pantry first before I make a grocery list of what I need um, so we can use up little bits of things. Uh, I feel like it won't, for the first couple weeks, it'll be pretty easy to find meals. Um, and then after that, it'll get harder. Okay, this is our basement food storage closet room. I guess it's actually a, our sump pump room and I didn't do anything over there. Um, but we had this long, narrow closet here that I put shelves in. It does not get wet in here hardly at all where we live. We are in a severe drought for years and years. We don't get flooding anymore. So our sump pump doesn't work. It works just fine. It doesn't have to work very much. Anyway, um, so this is our long-term storage. So things that are unopened, things that are shelf stable. We do not have mice or any little critters. We've got two cats in the house, but um, I don't like putting things down here that have um, cardboard or paper that could be chewed through those to stay up in the pantry upstairs. Now, um, sure, some things do get brought down, cake mix and stuff, um, but we don't use it frequently and we're down here enough that we can monitor how things, um, we can monitor how well things are being, are being stored and how they're aging and everything. So we have lots of canned goods and seasonings over here and then we have some other stuff um this doesn't get put away as well as i would like um it it is what it is again the kids help when we're putting groceries away and i just haven't had the energy to get down here and really get it organized but that is the hope that once we've eaten some of this stuff that I will feel it'll be less overwhelming and less daunting to come down here and get get it organized. So this is paper storage. Again, not a great um, system for it, but you know, everything's a work in progress. These are hard to get to, so we don't put perishables on here um, if we can help it. So... Yeah, this is our basement uh, long-term food storage that we will also be shopping out of um, for the next, you know, few weeks. Hopefully, hopefully six weeks so I can do very, very minimal shopping in the stores. So I made this raspberry jelly over the Christmas break to put into some raspberry thumbprint cookies and it did not set up very well. It's still really runny. As you can see, we've still used some, but I want to fix that so that it is more usable for jelly and so we don't waste anything. So in researching my problem of runny homemade jelly, I came across this um, little article, little blog, I guess, um, where someone fixed it and I'm going to try it out. So for every four cups of runny jelly we have, you'll add, uh, you put it in a pan and then you will add um, a fourth of a cup of sugar and a tablespoon of powdered pectin. 
and I am going to try that. Now I have this and then I have this full quart jar here or almost full quart jar here of some more. So I'm going to do a double batch of the sugar and pectin. So it's a half cup of sugar and two tablespoons of powdered pectin. And then I'm going to cook it up until it comes to a boil and everything dissolves and then until it gets kind of thickened. And then it should um, set up a lot better and be a lot more usable. Okay, I have my eight cups of jelly in here and it's, you know, it's kind of thick. It's just not thick enough to pour on to, um, or to, you can pour it just easily. It is not, uh, sorry, lots of interruptions today and I am just not feeling good. My throat is hurting pretty bad and we just get to stay home, which is great, but I had wanted to be productive and so I'm going to try to get this done <laughs> before I rest a little bit anyway um it's pourable but it's not spreadable and so for making sandwiches and toast which you know I'm putting it on biscuits and stuff this is really not functional so we're gonna pour the sugar and pectin mixture in and we're just gonna see this is an experiment here I'm just trying not to be wasteful because that is the name of the game right we're just trying to use the food we have and not be wasteful. Now, I don't know how other people do it, but I like to, when I make jelly, to use a whisk to break down the clumps in when I add the sugar and pectin in, even not just this time, but when I make my regular jelly. It just seems to work better for me, and it might not be the proper way to do it, but, but I prefer it. And the jelly has turned out um, it's not going to win any prizes or anything, but it has turned out just fine and everyone enjoys it. So, okay, I'm just going to cook it down and I will let you know how it turns out. Okay, it thickened up nicely. Um, you know, it's still runny when it's hot. It's still hot, but it definitely got a little thicker. As you can see, um, I have a, just a little under two quarts there. Um, I guess this is a little higher. It'll balance out to about two quarts of raspberry jelly homemade. I, um, if you've watched my grape jelly video, I don't can my jelly. My family will go through this um, well before it, it goes bad. And so I just make jelly as we need it. There are times where we don't have jelly and that's fine. We don't need it all the time. But um, when we do want it, I make it and then we eat it. I keep it in the fridge. So once it cools here, it'll go in the fridge and then we will enjoy it on toast and sandwiches and biscuits and all of that. So when I went through my pantry, um, I these are the meals that needed the least amount of items or items that we had that were going bad or needed to be eaten up like produce items. So let's see, I don't have certain days for these yet. I just wrote down the things that I decided that we were gonna make. So tacos, tortilla soup, bacon cauliflower because I have cauliflower that I need to use up. Chicken Alfredo, we have everything for that and I'm gonna start um, having uh, my children, my older children rotate and each make a meal under my guidance every week. So this is my daughter's week <clears throat> and she's choosing chicken Alfredo because honestly we are still fully stocked. We have a lot of options to choose from as <laughs> the weeks go on. Um, while we're doing this challenge we might have, might be a little more it might be a little difficult to come up with ideas, but we're going to do our best. And then the last meal here is the crock pot beef roast with the smashed potatoes and just some steamed broccoli. Okay, so that is all of the kind of stuff that I have done this week. Um, I forgot to say that the groceries came in at $48.07. So I had a little... Um, a little over a dollar left over after I got my change and I am using cash because cash is easier to stick to a budget on for me. I don't have to worry about be like, oh, 55 is fine. Um, so, <clears throat> so I'm sticking with cash when I'm buying things. Um, with that other dollar, I'll probably roll over into next week if we don't need something like extra bananas, which we might need some extra bananas and that would honestly cover a bunch of bananas. So we are good there. I do want to talk about some of the other things that I have done this week um, that I would probably do normally. Like we had some bananas going bad that the kids w wouldn't want to eat or um, we wouldn't put in smoothies. So I made two loaves of banana bread. 
Um, like I said, we would have done that already. We ate more leftovers than normal, so um, we do try to clear out all of our leftovers, but generally if there is not enough leftovers for everyone to get full on, I cook something else. And this year, this week, <laughs> This week I did not. So we, if we had left overnight, that was fine. Nor there was a couple nights where I wasn't feeling super great because of my throat and sinuses. And so we um, ate leftovers. And if someone was still hungry, we made some eggs or we found something snacky. Everyone got full, but there wasn't an extra meal cooked. I did make a loaf of bread, full made bread, um, with my bread machine. So I only use my bread machine um, to mix the dough up because I feel like it gets it really good and then rise in there. And then when it's done there, I pull it out and, and then knead it um, and then put it in the loaf pan to rise and I bake it in my oven. I do that especially in the winter because I like having the oven on to help with heating the house a little bit. Another thing that was kind of a bigger thing, was more of a mental uh, reset, is we don't live very far from an Aldi. And so normally if I find that we are missing an ingredient or two, me or my husband will run up to Aldi and pick it up. Well, that wasn't the case this week. Even if it was something cheap, we just made do without. Like I found out that I didn't have any Rotel any Rotel tomatoes or the Aldi version of Rotel tomatoes in my pantries. And so we just made the um, tortilla soup that we were gonna have, but it didn't have Rotel. Honestly, the kids liked it better because they don't like it with Rotel, but I liked it a little bit less, but it's okay, because we did just fine and we got full. Going forward and something I'm going to always try to do and have always tried to do, but I'm a little, I guess, less strict about it is I'm going to be try to keep um, a pulse on all the produce and food in the house that's perishable and make sure that every last bit is getting used up. Sometimes little things, um, I it falls through the cracks, we gets left in the fridge or on the counter longer than it should and I just toss it. I'm gonna try to keep, um, I'm trying to keep, I'm going to try to keep using all of those items up. Even if it's a jalapeno, I'm gonna chop it up and throw it into something. Um, <clears throat> it'll add some flavor, some nutrition, and I won't be wasting as much. And so that um, is something I'm going to try to be doing as well. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video today. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it, that it's helped you a little bit, and maybe you want to consider doing something like this with me. Let me know what are some of your favorite pantry meals and ways that you like to use up your uh, leftover produce or things. Do you make soups or casseroles? I am always looking for more recipes and more ideas. Sometimes it's really hard, especially when you get a couple weeks into a pantry challenge to not kind of go blank when you look and you feel like you have nothing. And I feel like this being the first week, it was pretty easy. I feel like next week won't be bad. I feel like week three, I'll really start to hit a wall and I will um, have no ideas on what to make. And then I will be um, really Really doing some online research into recipes and trying to create some things so that we are cleaning out our pantry, saving some money, and starting the new year off with a positive balance and not um, kind of sinking a little bit. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.